morning. Welcome to worship today. Some announcements to highlight today is uh, our Commitment Sunday, where we, um, as part of our covenant with God and God with us, we make our pledges for how we want to live into that covenant. So we commit our financial pledges and our time and talent, and there's already some in the basket here, so I'll tell you a little bit more about that later in the service, but uh, we'll just place them in the basket here before the font. Um, and again, the symbolism of trying to connect with our, our baptism is, is the reason that it's there. So hopefully you see all that symbolism and uh, it helps, helps in our understanding of what it means to um, be disciples of Christ and how we live. Also, we are starting our holiday basket program for Thanksgiving and for Christmas, and there's envelopes on the table in the narthex and, and some information on the purple insert in your bulletins. So I invite you to check that out. Uh, we do have adult Sunday school today, kids as well. Um, Sunday school kids are meeting in the room off the sanctuary here, and then the uh, young, yes, that is correct, Vincent, right over there. And uh, kids are with Shannon, in the uh, Eagles Wing. And there's an adult study today as well in the Fellowship Hall, Trusting God in the Wilderness. And then I want to also point you to November when we get there and we will be starting a study of the Gospel of Luke. So for the next church year, beginning with Advent, at the end of November, we are in the Gospel of Luke for the coming year. And so the invitation is to come study and, and familiarize ourselves again with Luke's Gospel. So I hope you'll join us for that. As we uh, begin our worship today then, I invite you into a time of silence and invite you into prayer as we center ourselves for worship. I invite you to stand as we begin with our confession. Blessed be the Holy Trinity, one God, whose word is life, whose presence is sure, and whose love is endless. Amen. I invite you to join me as together we confess our sins to the one who welcomes us with an open heart. God, our comforter, like lost sheep, we have gone astray. We gaze upon abundance and see scarcity. We turn our faces away from injustice and oppression. We exploit the earth with our apathy and greed. Free us from our sin, gracious God. Listen when we call out to you for help. Lead us by your love to love our neighbors as when. Amen. All have sinned and fall short of the glory of God. By the gift of grace in Christ Jesus, God makes you righteous. Receive with glad hearts the forgiveness of all your sins. Amen.
Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And also with you. Please be seated. Let us pray. Eternal light, shine in our hearts. Eternal wisdom, scatter the darkness of our ignorance. Eternal compassion, have mercy on us. Turn us to seek your face and enable us to reflect your goodness. Through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. Continue with the hearing of God's word. Our psalm is from Psalm 126, a song of ascents. When the Lord restored the fortunes of Zion, we were like those who dreamed. Our mouths were filled with laughter, our tongues with songs of joy. Then it was said among the nations, the Lord has done great things for them. The Lord has done great things for us, and we are filled with joy. Restore our fortunes, Lord, like streams in the Negev. Those who sow there with tears will reap with songs of joy. Those who go out weeping, carrying seed to sow, will return with songs of joy, carrying sheaves with them. The passage speaks not only of the southern kingdom, Judah, and its homecoming from exile in Babylon, but also of the northern kingdom, Israel and Ephraim, and its restoration. The northern tribes of Israel had been lost in exile to Assyria more than a century before Jeremiah prophesied. The reading for today will be Jeremiah 31, 7 through 19. This is what the Lord says. Sing with joy for Jacob. Shout for the foremost of the nations. Make your praises heard and say, Lord, save your people, the remnant of Israel. See, I will bring them from the land of the north and gather them from the ends of the earth, Among them will be the blind and the lame, expectant mothers and women in labor. A great throng will return. They will come with weeping. They will pray as I bring them back. I will lead them beside streams of water on a level path where they will not stumble because I am Israel's father and Ephraim is my firstborn son. Word of God, word of life. reading today is from the 10th chapter of the Gospel of Mark, beginning at verse 46. Jesus continues his journey towards Jerusalem, which he's been doing for some time now in our readings. Then they came to Jericho as Jesus and his disciples, together with a large crowd, were leaving the city. A blind man, Bartimaeus, which means son of Timaeus, was sitting by the, the roadside begging. When he heard that it was Jesus of Nazareth, he began to shout, Jesus, son of David, have mercy on me. Many rebuked him and told him to be quiet, but he shouted all the more, 
Son of David, have mercy on me. Jesus stopped and said, call him. So they called to the blind man, cheer up, on your feet, he's calling you. Throwing his cloak aside, he jumped to his feet and came to Jesus. What do you want me to do for you? Jesus asked him. The blind man said, Rabbi, I want to see. Go, Jesus said, your faith has healed you. And immediately he received his sight and followed Jesus along the road. The Gospel of our Lord. Please be seated. Any kids would love you to have come up. Come on up. All right. Vincent, Mira. Anybody else? Got a small crowd today. Oh, here we go. Good. Come on up. How are you? Oh, yeah. I didn't know that was up there. Thank you. Hi, Elijah. All right. Good morning. How are you guys doing? Good. It's a pretty cool fall day out today, isn't it? Yeah, I like days like this. Well, have any of you guys seen a baby recently? Any babies around? We don't have any current babies here in our congregation. So you'll get to see a baby soon? Well, I didn't have a baby to bring home at home, but I do have a baby doll, so we're going to pretend this is our baby, okay? Do you guys remember when you were a baby? <laughs> oh, do you? A three-year-old, yeah. Uh, it seems like three years old seems to be some of our first memories. Well, when you were a baby, and one thing we know about babies is they, they are not shy when it comes to letting you know what they want. What do they do if they want something? Mira? They cry, that's right. They cry, they sometimes scream, they fuss. And they will let you know if they are hungry thirsty, sick, tired, needing a diaper change, any of those things, because they don't know how to talk, and that is the only way that they can communicate with us. So babies let you know what they need by crying, like we said. They don't care if you're in church. They don't care if you're on an airplane. That was, as a mom, it's like, oh, I dreaded bringing a baby on the airplane because you just never knew. They don't care if you're at a movie, if you're eating dinner in a restaurant. If they need something, they tell us. And as we get older, like you guys are, you learn to be more reserved. You don't sit in the pew and cry if you want something, right? <laughs> you learn how to kind of uh, manage your emotions better. Um, and so our wishes are known differently as we get older. Or should they be? The Bible talks about a man who wasn't scared to let Jesus know he needed something. As Jesus and his disciples were leaving a town called Jericho, a blind man named Bartimaeus was sitting beside the road. When he heard that Jesus was approaching, he began to cry out, Jesus, son of David, have mercy on me. His crying out disturbed the people around him. Was he a baby? No, he wasn't a baby. He was a grown man. But he was crying out. And they said, be quiet, they yelled at him. But what did he do? He wasn't quiet. That's right. He shouted louder. When Jesus heard Bartimaeus crying out, he stopped and said, tell him to come to me. Bartimaeus jumped up, threw aside his coat, and he went to Jesus. What do you want me to do for you, Jesus asked. I want to see, Bartimaeus answered. Because what do we know about him? He was blind, that's right. Go, Jesus said, your faith has healed you. Instantly, Bartimaeus could see, and he followed Jesus down the road. Like a mother who does whatever she can to find out what her baby wants or needs, God knows that we have wants and needs and wants what's best for us. The Bible says don't worry about anything. Instead, pray about everything. Tell God what you need and thank him for all he has done. When you have a need in your life, don't be shy. Speak up. 
Remember, Jesus wants you to come to him. Okay? So let's say a little prayer. Heavenly Father, we know that you love your children and want what's best for them. Help us remember we don't need to worry about anything. All we need to do is speak up and ask you. In Jesus' name, amen. Thank you, guys. <laughs>
thinking of Bartimaeus in the gospel reading today, this blind beggar, Mark says, he's sitting by the side of the road as Jesus walks by. And he must have known this, this shrunken life. Not the fact that he was blind itself. If you've heard of Andre Bocelli, he is blind, but his, I imagine his life is pretty expansive. Have you seen the video when Ed Sheeran goes to his house and they sing a song together? And um, beautiful house, beautiful family. He's going to be in Seattle shortly, and Marianne and Sven are going to go see him. So just the fact that Bartimaeus was blind is not what I'm talking about, but what he's reduced to because of his blindness, sitting by the side of the road and begging. It seems like his days consisted in trying to get enough to survive that day to scrape together a little food and get enough to eat. And as Bartimaeus is sitting by the side of the road, he hears that Jesus of Nazareth is in the crowd of passers-by. And so he shouts out, Jesus, son of David, have mercy on me. He's heard about Jesus. He obviously thinks Jesus can help. And so he calls out to him. But Mark says, many in the crowd sternly ordered him to be quiet. In the eyes of those in the crowd, Bartimaeus, just a blind beggar, has no status or position or power. He is not worth their attention. And just like the disciples a few weeks ago, keeping the little children away from Jesus, blind beggars are also not worth much in the eyes of the world. You're not worth his time, they were saying. Don't bother him. But that, as Kim said, that didn't stop Bartimaeus. He cries all the more loudly, Son of David, have mercy on me. And Jesus doesn't see him the way the crowd sees him. He is somebody worth seeing and caring about. And so Jesus stood still, Mark says, and, call, and said, call him here. In the prayer of the day that we had this morning, we acknowledge that God is light and wisdom and compassion. And in God's eyes, the last are first, and the first last. And everyone has value and is loved by God, including little children, including blind beggars, including all who are least and last in the eyes of the world. The crowd called to Bartimaeus, take heart, get up, he is calling you. And hope for Bartimaeus is born. So throwing off his cloak, he sprang up and came to Jesus. Worry shrinks what we can see, but hope expands our vision and helps us to see whole new possibilities. This is the hope that Bartimaeus saw in Jesus. So he comes up to Jesus, and Jesus asks him, what do you want me to do for you? And Bartimaeus says, my teacher, rabbi, let me see again. And so Jesus says, go, your faith has made you well. That is, your hope in me is well placed. Your hope is placed in the one who can and will help you to see again. So Mark says, immediately he regained his sight and he followed him on the way. He followed him seeing with the eyes of hope and where hope looks. Steve told us about a painting this past week about Daniel and the lion's den. You know that story, right? And this is a picture of, of Daniel, and the lions are kind of roaming around him, sizing him up, probably wondering what kind of a meal he will make. But Daniel isn't looking at the lions. Instead, he's looking out the window, and he's looking up at the heavens. He's got his eyes on God and not on the source of his worry that's all around him. And then Steve also told us about his dad going in for surgery. He had to have his leg amputated above his knee because of diabetes. And so you can imagine that was probably a little worrisome and, and he was probably anxious. When they showed up at the hospital or they were preparing for the surgery, as they go to go on the elevator, off the elevator comes a woman who had a prosthetic. And then a little bit later, as I hope I'm remembering this close to right, um, Steve's dad's favorite show is The Price is Right. My dad likes Jeopardy, but um, anyway, they're watching Jeopardy, and the winner, are they're watching Price is Right, and the winner um, talked about getting a new prosthetic. And so these chance encounters, 
and, and they were wondering if this was the hand of God showing Steve and his dad and his sister that everything was going to be okay, that, that God had this. Now, I don't know if God was actually saying this to Steve and his dad, but in any case, it helped them to see with the eyes of hope, didn't it? They knew that it would be okay. And we, we are people of hope. And our hope is in Jesus, just like Bartimaeus. It is in Jesus that we have seen and heard and come to know the life that is promised to us in Jesus' name. So when we, we can't see anything but the mess that we are in and the sources of our, our worry roaming around us and sizing us up, then we can turn our eyes to Jesus and we see hope. When the crowd makes it clear that we are not worth their time or even to be noticed, in Jesus, we see we are valued and loved by God and we have hope. In the dead of night, when we lie awake and we're anxious and worried about what lies ahead, we can look to Jesus in hope. Worry can paralyze us so that we are unable to, to do anything to help ourselves or to help anyone else. But hope breaks through and, and frees us so that we not only have hope for ourselves, but we can bring hope to others as well. So again, in the prayer of the day, we prayed to God who is eternal light, eternal wisdom, eternal compassion. We prayed that God would shine in our hearts and would scatter the darkness of ignorance and have mercy on us. In a word, we prayed for hope. In a world that is filled with more than enough reasons to be afraid and worried and anxious, we, we, uh, we can reflect God's light. We can reflect God's wisdom and compassion in this world of darkness and ignorance and, and a distinct shortage of mercy. And so in this time of pandemic, of division and violence, and in every time we pray with the psalm, restore our fortunes, O Lord. Fill us again with laughter and joy. And we know and hope this will be so. Amen. I invite you to stand as we sing together. our prayers, grounding our faith in Jesus and serving our neighbor in love, we offer our prayers for the church and for the world and for all of creation. Let us pray. We give you thanks for this congregation and all who worship here. 
We pray for your blessing on us, on us all, those who worship in person and also those who in caution remain separate. Continue to lead each of us so that we proclaim your salvation in word and deed. Be with those who remain separate in body. Help them to see their connection with you and, and with us and in their pilgrim community and our shared hope in you. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We pray for the staff at Fir Grove Elementary who are starting to identify families to participate in our holiday basket program, guide their care and compassion, give them wisdom and insight, and we give you thanks that we are able to participate with them in this ministry. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Lord of heaven and earth, we pray for the leaders of nations, bring reconciliation between nations, draw peoples within nations together in unity, working for the common good they share. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. And as one who provides all that we need, help us to trust in you. Inspire us to generosity so that we carry out the work of making disciples of all nations. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. God of compassion, we pray for your spirit of peace and comfort and healing in the midst of pandemic. Help us to turn the tide and bring the number of new cases down and prevent further illness and death. Lord, in your mercy. And God of mercy, we pray for all who do the work of healing in mind, body, and spirit. Surround and comfort all who struggle with depression and anxiety, with cancer or diabetes, with dementia or any illness. We pray especially for strength and support and healing for Julie, for Gary, for Doug Wisness, for continued healing for Robin following back surgery, and for Sharon Edwards, for Ian Johnson having rotator cuff surgery on Wednesday. And now you are invited to add your, your prayer concerns either out loud or silently in your hearts. Mary's nephew, Clay. Family of retired Pastor Joe Wagner. Family of Pastor James Hansen in hospice. Give hope to all who are anxious and overcome with worry because of pain, suffering, and despair. Give them hope in you. Lord, in your mercy. We lift our prayers to you, O God, trusting in your abiding grace. Amen. The peace of God, which passes all understanding, be with you always. Before we move to the service of Holy Communion, I want to invite you and give you instructions for how to present your gifts of financial pledges and of time and talent. Recall in Matthew 23, Jesus asks, which is greater, the gift or the altar that makes the gift sacred? We know that our gifts by themselves are not sacred, but as we place them before the altar, we trust God will turn them into something sacred for use in God's kingdom. So as you come forward in a couple of minutes for Holy Communion, you're invited to bring with you your commitments for financial giving, as well as the giving of your time and talents for the coming year. And as we place our, our commitments in the basket before the baptismal font and in front of the altar, we do this in light of our covenant with God and God with us to live in our baptismal promise. At the font, we dip our fingers and make the sign of the cross. At the table, we receive the bread and wine of new life. These are signs of God's gracious love for us. These commitments we make are our grateful response in love to God who first loved us. And that's only communion. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is indeed right, our duty, and our joy that we should at all times and at all places give thanks and praise to you, almighty and merciful God, through our Savior, Jesus Christ, 
fulfilling the promise of the resurrection. You pour out the fire of your spirit, uniting in one body, people of every nation and tongue. And so with the church on earth and the hosts of heaven, we praise your name. On the night in which he was betrayed, our Lord Jesus took bread. He gave thanks and broke it, and he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take and eat. This is my body, given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. And after supper, he took the cup. He gave thanks, and he gave it for all to drink, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood, shed for you and for all people for the forgiveness of sin. Do this for the remembrance of me. Join with me as we pray together our Lord's Prayer. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done, on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Save us from the time of trial and deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. All who hunger and thirst, you are invited to come to this table and, and this meal to taste and see that the Lord is good. So please come.
to Emmaus retreats, if you've heard of those, after, on the final day after they receive communion, you go, you don't go back to your seats, you make a big circle around the whole sanctuary, and then everybody, you make the motions to go with that song and join hands. It's pretty, pretty cool to be a part of that, so maybe someday we'll do that. I won't tell you which Sunday, so you'll <laughs> be sure to still be here, but uh, please stand. The body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ strengthen you and keep you in his grace. Amen. Let us pray. Lord of life, in the gift of of your body, you turn the crumbs of our faith into a feast of salvation. Send us forth into the world with shouts of joy, bearing witness to the abundance of your love in Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen want to also offer a prayer of dedication for our commitments and covenants of giving for the coming year. So let us pray. God of overflowing generosity, creator of heaven and earth, we come before you with grateful hearts. We have heard your call to live generous lives. In these commitments of financial giving and the giving of time and talents, we renew our response to that invitation. We heard your call when we knew want and need. We heard your call when we knew abundance and plenty. Your call came to us in this sanctuary, but it also came to us in our community, our neighborhoods, in our places of work and play, and in our homes. In these commitments, we are joined to you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Joined to your work in the world, we pray for the guiding presence of your Spirit. Joined to your way of loving and serving, We pray to be a community built on trust in you. In these commitments, we offer ourselves to you. May they be blessed by your holy presence. Born of joy and poverty, may these offerings overflow in generosity. Amen. And now, people of God, you are sent out to bring hope and joy to a suffering world. The Holy Trinity, one God, be with you and bless you now and forever. Amen. Stay and sing the postlude if you like. Join us for a Sunday school wherever you fit in, and then go in God's peace. The living word is with you. <laughs> 